So for my project, I wanted to explore the idea of walkability on Walnut Street because I think that a lot of the businesses on Walnut Street count on foot traffic. You notice, you know, the path from 15th to 23rd, the path is quite clear, but the businesses themselves are posing a barrier. But you notice here we're standing in front of guests. Now the door to guests, the two massive glass doors that open to the sidewalk and become barriers. There is going to be a sign. There's lots of people, people with strollers, trees, signposts, parking pass. There's a guy and a pizza delivery guy. Now pay attention to him because you're going to see him again. There's, um, you know, you notice, look, people bump into each other. There's two women having an argument. Uh, uh, so it's been spilled in front of McDonald's and people are visibly upset. And so you notice you know, the way that a business arranged themselves often influences the um, the foot traffic pattern within an area. And, and furthermore, you're going to see up here with this pizzeria where the sitting area extends very much in the sidewalk and the walking area is made quite small because there's a parking car, there are trees, and so people are sort of funnel into this very, very small space to walk. And, you know, people are not patient. People have bags. And look, you know, my friend, the pizza delivery guy, is really struggling to try and get around these two women. There are chairs on the side. There are bikes, and he's in a hurry. And so while as I'm standing there, I'm watching him. I'm thinking, well, what's, what's the ultimate challenge to this? And, and I think it was wonderful right at the moment the universe... Uh, sort of gave me an answer. So you just look at, watch him, and right around the corner, so I'm thinking, well, what's the worst case that I think would happen? You know, appears a three baby strollers and an elderly woman on a walker. Now, can you imagine the three baby strollers, the elderly woman on her walker being, you know, pushed into that funnel space with more shoppers, with perhaps another pizza delivery person trying to make its way through? It, it's quite hectic, and I think it really does contribute to the stress that goes along with the massive number of amount of noise that's already on the street. Now, you look at here in terms of safety. Look, look, this this parking exit cuts across the sidewalk. Can you imagine? You know, people are jogging because it's right across from Rin House, um, on the sidewalk Barnes Code Office. People are not going to pay attention because you're on the sidewalk. You don't envision. You don't. You know. You're not worried that any moment a car's going to come at you. But it does. Now, this bar. You know, I drink here often, and. On a Saturday night, it's packed with people. There are people lingering on the sidewalk. So if you're walking home, it's it's hard, you know, and you don't want to walk through a crowd of drunken grad students. And basically, you either walk around them or you end up, you know, find yourself walking on the street itself, which there are a lot of traffic, especially in the evening. Um, further, as we were making our way towards the corner of 22nd and Walnut, which I think it's it's quite a, a dangerous corner. Um, so if you pay attention here, 22nd has to make a left onto Walnut and Walnut makes a right onto 22nd. You notice at the corner of 22nd and Walnut there is a subway and a, a Sunnyville gas station. So if you want to go into the gas station, there's two entryways, one on 22nd and one on Walnut Street. And most people on 22nd will only see the entryway on Walnut Street. So basically they'll have to make a left from 22nd onto Walnut and they'll have to cut across the lane of traffic in order to make it into the entryway and a lot of people would do it you know they're impatient they're human they don't want to wait for the traffic that's on walnut tree so people would just you know on 20 seconds see uh, breaking the traffic and you know, step on the pedal and make it go for it and you notice that as i'm walking there is a van that does this very same thing i can hear it coming by and look it barely you know misses can you imagine if i was jogging i had my headphones on and it, it could lead to something very terrible. And I think in the same way, if you look at further up, you know, there's a cab that's going to be coming out. Look, the cab's going to cut across the sidewalk. There aren't too many signs, you know, warning people, saying that, you know, beware of pedestrians, beware of runners, or beware of regular cabs. In a way, I think how a business lays itself out can greatly influence the behavior, but all overall, the safety outcome of, um, I think, urban pedestrians. You know, I did the same experiment on Walnut Street and, I mean, on, excuse me, on Chestnut, and, and it was a riot. And I think it, it does reflect on the, the population that is served by these businesses. Um, you don't see a stampede field come running out of Tiffany, so the area is quite easy to walk there. But then when you move to where the gap is, you know, there's lots of traffic because it's more affordable, I think. And suddenly you get an increase in people, but also in the type of people, like families, people with strollers. In the same way, you know, like the Navy... Uh, the old navy outlet on chestnut Street. it was a riot there were so many people coming in the store and out of the store people with strollers going by there were people with bikes 
Um, and so I think having walked both streets, both ways, I realized that, you know, for a business, you know, they have tremendous role in safety. 